How to make a vintage Bassett Loke steam plant work again, part 4. Cleaning up the steam engine, assembling the boiler casing, fitting the steam fittings and steam testing the boiler. Starting off with cleaning up the engine. Maybe you'll find this a good idea. My mini craft drill to the right of the picture is fitted with a small drum sander. I'm using this to drive the flywheel but I'm not letting the flywheel spin free and putting a little bit of resistance on it so it slows it down. And what this does is it allows the drum sander to clean the outside edge without digging in and making a ridge. This flywheel casting is a bit corroded around the outside edge. So this idea of the drum sander both driving the flywheel and at the same time removing surface rust is a good idea. I'll use it again because it really works. In this clip you can clearly see that I've been painting the burner and it's looking a lot better. This is the second bottle of methylated spirits that I'm putting through the burner and here I'm filling the burner using an old Mamod funnel that I found in a box. The paint is still a little bit soft so I'm being very careful not to spill the methylated spirit onto the paintwork because surprisingly it marks the new paint and it's strange that because it's alcohol. If it was cellulose thinners I could understand it but no, alcohol does it too if the paint hasn't fully hardened. I think this burn is excellent, it's the best part of the plant for me. I've never seen one like this before, a vaporising spirit burner. That's about full, so I think I'll carefully remove the funnel and refit the brass screw cap. You will notice that there isn't a vent hole in the brass screw cap, it's actually a hole drilled in the corner of the tank at the top. Time now to light the burner. Normally I wouldn't show this in detail because it's a fairly routine thing lighting a burner, but watch. You light the small wicks, the flame from the small wicks heat up the respective burner head, this vaporises the spirit, then the spirit vapour starts to burn. It's really good, look, here it comes. This burner is burning a lot less yellow than it first did. It was really bad, very, very sooty, and it's still not perfect, but maybe it will get better. I'll find out how good this burner is at the end of this episode when I steam the boiler. And while I'm waiting for the other burner to light, I'd like to say a big thank you to a couple of viewers, Noisy Andrew and Joss. Noisy Andrew and Joss sent me some wood. Now this is a bit of an odd thing to send me, but this is special wood. Wood like I've never seen before. This is very hard wood, and it's surprisingly heavy. The accompanying letter explains what it is. It's called Jarrow Wood. I'll put the spelling on screen so you can see how it's spelt. And why am I mentioning this wood when the burner is on screen? Well, it's quite simple. I'm going to use some of this wood for around the outside edge of the baseboard. Because the outside edges of steam plant baseboards are very easily damaged. But this stuff is so hard, I think it will wear much better. And I'm only a couple of episodes away from making the baseboard to fit all these components onto. In the short time that I've taken to tell you about this jarrow wood, you can see how much the flames have improved on the burner heads. It's time now to turn my attention to the boiler mounting. The first thing I'm doing is running a tap through the holes to clean them out because they've been painted and they were a bit rusty in there. This is a 5BA tap to clean up the threads to accept the 5BA bolts that I'm going to use to hold the boiler mounting together. But I'm only using these brass countersunk bolts on one end of the boiler because the other end of the boiler isn't countersunk for some reason. One viewer commented on the last video that I sounded a bit down. Well, no, I'm not down in the slightest, I wish. I always go high as a kite if I get stressed or tired. The reason I may have sounded a bit down was it was early in the morning. For instance, this video I'm currently voicing over at 7.30 in the morning, and it's Sunday. In order to make the videos and do the jobs in a time scale that I need to work around, I have to get up early in the morning to finish the video voiceovers. Here's the smoke box end plate roughly in position. And what I'm currently doing while you're watching this is cleaning up the original bolts because I'm going to reuse them to hold the end plate in position. And now it's time to fit the fittings. I always use Loctite 542 to seal the threads and I'm applying some of this to the steam tap. I've also put the right size washer on so that the steam tap's outlet points towards the back of the boiler and I'm using a large spanner just to nip this up. And now I've finished cleaning up the original 5BA cheese head bolts, so I'm screwing them into position. Are they bolts? Are they screws? I don't really care. I call them bolts, so on my videos, that's what they're called. If you wish to call them screws, that's okay by me. In my world, screws are for screwing into pieces of wood, 
or it's a slang term for someone who works as a prison officer in a prison. This is the safety valve. It's a tapered plug in a tapered socket. Before fitting this part back into the boiler, I relapped the taper to get a good seal. The original sealing washer was unserviceable. I used a copper washer, which is a much better idea. And in this clip, as usual, I'm using my Barco spanner to tighten up the safety valve. The next part to be fitted to the boiler is this. This is the pressure gauge. I think that this pressure gauge flange may be a bit of a problem. When I did the hydraulic test on this boiler to 120 pounds per square inch, this fitting leaked very badly. I capped off the pressure gauge, but this flange was almost impossible to seal. That's why I didn't use any of the footage from the hydraulic test because there was water everywhere. I got it to seal well enough to take the hydraulic test up to 120 pounds per square inch. And this means that the boiler's working pressure is half that, so it has a working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch. I thought I'd take this opportunity to use some wet or dry sandpaper and get a perfect finish on the flange. Then I made a gasket, and now I'm using some gasket sealant, so I really don't think that the flange is going to leak. The flange is only held to the boiler with 6BA bolts, which are a little bit small really. We'll see what happens in the steam test. And here's the flange fitted with the gasket. And it's time now to fit the flange to the boiler, being very careful not to shear these little 6BA bolts. 6BA brass bolts into copper is not the strongest combination I can think of. But it's the way the boiler was designed, so I'm going to have to go with this. I suppose I could soft solder it to the back head. But that's not a good idea because if the boiler gets overheated the solder will melt and it will leak. I use silicone rubber tubing frequently for connecting steam lines up for testing things. And the stuff's okay, it's very strong. I generally get it off the auction site that we all know and love called eBay and it's an automotive product. Hardly been able to contain my excitement, I fit my special metal funnel into the hole in the top of the boiler. And now I'm filling the boiler with water. Not forgetting, of course, to open the steam valve to let the air out. And in no time at all, the boiler's full to the top. So the water gauge is good. It's not furred up at all, which is very surprising for a boiler of this age. I can't really get up steam without refitting the chimney, so I polished it up on my polishing spindle and finished it off with brasso wadding, and it looks really splendid. The burner's lit and burning well, so I just have to slide this in behind the boiler at the smoke box end. I'm just checking to make sure it's aligned properly, and it is. And in no time at all, within about, I don't know, six or eight minutes, I have some steam. Not a lot of steam, but enough steam to show me that the tap leaks slightly, but worse than that, the pressure gauge flange leaks. Well, it's not the flange this time, it's just around the bolt. I think that's going to be an easy fix, though. A bit of Loctite 542 should seal the threads where the little bolt goes into the back head. This is a curious thing. The only thing that leaked in the hydraulic test was the flange for the pressure gauge, but now the boiler's in steam, the water gauge is leaking both at the top of the glass and at the bottom of the glass. So, first of all I'm going to try and tighten this bolt very slightly, which makes it worse. So I think I'll leave that, I don't want to strip the bolt. I'll do it as I said, once the boiler's cool, I'll apply some Loctite 542 to it. I'm letting the pressure get a bit higher on the boiler, and I'm keeping my eye on the water gauge. Sometimes I've seen water gauges seal automatically, when the temperature and the pressure inside the boiler gets higher. But unfortunately, not in this case. With the steam in the boiler, currently at just under £50 per square inch, as you can see, the water gauge glass is not sealing at all. So I'm going to do something that you should never do. Never do this. Never, ever do this. Never adjust the water gauge when the boiler is in steam. I'm doing it so you don't have to. For successful operation, the nuts at the end of the water gauge don't need to be tight. Just pass finger tight. So how did I get this to seal? Well, first of all, I slackened off the nuts and then I tightened them ever so slightly. And the best analogy I can think of is it's like putting a lid back on a jar of jam, about that kind of pressure. You'll have to trust me on this, if you over tighten the nuts, whether the boiler's in steam or not, the glass will crack. 
And so obviously, if you do this with the boiler in steam like I've just done, and you must never, ever, ever, ever do that, health and safety, etc., you'll get a mixture of steam and water, and the water will be boiling, and also it has bits of glass in it, which will come your way at a fairly high speed and take you completely by surprise and probably cause personal injury. What I'm doing at the moment is opening the steam valve to see what kind of a capacity I'm getting out of the steam valve and the answer to that is plenty. Normally I don't need to use a cloth to open and shut a steam valve because the skin on my thumb and index finger of my right hand has been burnt so many times it's quite thick now and it insulates me against the heat but unfortunately I tightened the gland nut on this steam tap a little bit too much so I had to put a lot of pressure on it to open and shut it. That's why I used the cloth. So the burner's finished, I've blown it out and I'm now letting the pressure drop in the boiler. This steam tap has a groove in the centre of the wheel and the idea of this groove is to reduce the surface area for your fingers so they don't get burnt. But I've put an o-ring in the groove and this is even better because now you could use more delicate parts of your anatomy to open the steam valve. My video camera that I use in the workshop gets very dirty, it gets oily, greasy, it gets epoxy resin on it and all sorts of things. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to steam clean it. Uh, no, that's a joke, don't steam clean your cameras. The camera's much further away than it looks and I'm using a telephoto lens. So there you have it, the boiler's come back to life and it's a great little boiler. And that's it for this episode, so thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.